Welcome back to Premiere Pro Made Easy. This is Chapter 2. In Chapter 1, we discuss the concept of non-destructive editing. By the end of this chapter, you'll know how to create a new project, understand Premiere's workspace concept and customize it to fit your workflow. If you haven't installed Premiere yet, download and install first the Creative Cloud app from Adobe's website and then Premiere Pro from within the Creative Cloud app. Since the installation process is straightforward and I assume you're familiar with installing software on your PC or Mac, I won't cover that. Premiere Pro is available through a subscription model and you can try it for free for 14 days. Follow along with this tutorial to decide if you want to continue with the subscription. Once installed, you can also launch Premiere from here. I have mine pinned to the taskbar. I'm working with the 2024 version of Premiere Pro, the latest as of now. If you are using a newer version, the interface might look slightly different. Before we start Premiere, make sure you have the media available to follow along with the tutorial. You can download it for free from the link in the description in either 4K or Full HD. Depending on your available drive space and download speed, you can choose what suits you best. When you open Premiere Pro for the first time, the middle section is empty. This is where your recent projects will appear. Since this is a fresh installation, we only have the option to create a new project. So let's do that now. Now we can give our project a name. I call it Visitor because that's the subject of the footage from the download link in the subscription. And we choose a location. In chapter one, I was stressing the importance of data management. When you download the files from the link in the description, you see that there is already a folder structure with an empty folder 09 Premiere projects where we will store our new project. So I copy this address and I'm gonna paste that here into my location file. Select folder. Now I have this. Here in the middle, you see project template. I will cover that in a later chapter. At this moment, we could also choose to import media for our new project. On the left side, you see a list of possible media location. And on the right side, you see various import options. In the middle, you see sample media, which are pre-installed with Premiere. I suggest that we start with an empty project and have a look at Premiere's workspace concept and then learn about various ways to import media in the next chapter. Just in case you want to see where the pre-installed sample media is stored in the standard installation, this is the path. Now I click Create. And since this is a new project in a new installation, we are greeted with an empty project and the learning workspace. I suggest that we all switch to the assembly workspace and there's two ways to do that. You have this workspaces icon here and we can choose assembly or we can go to windows workspaces and choose assembly. Either way, we are now here on the same workspace and in case your assembly workspace looks slightly uh, different, you can click again here and choose reset to saved layout or do the same here, Windows workspaces, reset to saved layout. So now we should all be on the same page and it's easier for you to follow along with this tutorial. Premiere offers you so many panels for various tasks that it is impossible to show them all at the same time on a regular sized monitor. The workspace presets are designated to various tasks and show the necessary panels in various windows. You've just seen how to choose a workspace and how to reset it. But why is it even necessary to reset it? Premiere gives you total freedom in how to modify the layout of a workspace and even create as many new workspaces as you like to adapt to the needs of the task at hand. The assembly workspace, for instance, has five windows and some of them have multiple panels. In this window, for instance, I have a panel for the program monitor here and the source monitor and I can activate one or the other. But I personally 
prefer to see my source monitor at the same time simultaneously with the program monitor. You will later understand why. So I can just grab it with the mouse, pull it out and dog it to the left, for instance, here. And when I let my mouse go, now I have two windows, one with the source and one with the program monitor. That is very handy. And already I have a new workspace. I can also add panels to my workspace just by going to window. And you see all the ticked items are active panels. But let's say I want to have my effects shown. Then I just click here and here I have my effects uh, panel. If I want to have my effects panel in a different window, let's see here in the program window sharing that window, then I can just drag it over. And now these two panels share one window and I can switch between program and effects window. In this case, it makes no sense because in the assembly workspace, I don't need any effects because the assembly workspace is here to import and generate a rough cut. So effects is something we need in a different environment. So I go to this lines, which are called hamburger menu, and I can undock, I can just close it, you know, and it's gone. And now it's again here available. Let's add it again. And here I add my effect and show you something else. I can also go to the hamburger menu and undock this panel. Now I have a free floating window here, which I can dock to an existing window or even move to another monitor. You know, I can move it out of this monitor and uh, I can spread out my workspace over several monitors. This is very practical. I personally like to use three monitors when I edit. But for this tutorial, I limit myself to one monitor so everybody can follow who doesn't have an extra monitor. This flexibility to shape the program layout is actually one of my favorite features. But sometimes you mess up and that's when choosing reset to save layout comes in handy. But let's say we want to keep this layout, we like it and we want to save it for a later use. Then we can save as a new workspace and give it a name. In this case, I would call it assembly and add my initials. So I know that it's not the standard assembly workspace. And now we have one more workspace available, which is assembly-cc and it's the active workspace. If one day you want to get rid of a saved layout, you can choose edit workspace, mark whatever workspace you want to delete and delete it. But you can only delete the workspaces you have saved. So if I go, let's say to the original assembly here, you see the delete option is grayed out. You can't delete any of the default workspaces. I find this concept of unlimited possibilities to create workspace layouts to match your preference one of the biggest strengths of Premiere Pro and why it is currently my favorite video editing software. I wonder how you like it. Please write your comments in English or German. I hope you found this chapter helpful. If you did, please click like and subscribe and come back to chapter 3 of Adobe Premiere Made Easy. Bye-bye.